What's going on guys, Firewolf Tech here, showing you guys the Titan Army 32C1S gaming monitor. This is a 32 inch VA monitor that features a QHD resolution, 240Hz refresh rate, and a 1 millisecond response time for smooth gaming. You also get this beautiful 1500R curvature, a 99% sRGB color gamut coverage, and adaptive sync technology which will be compatible for both AMD and Nvidia graphics cards. This monitor has a retail price of $399, which is budget friendly, but you and I both want to know if this 32 inch gaming monitor is worth getting. Huge thanks to Titan Army for sending this out for me to review and sponsoring this video. As always, I'll be showcasing PC gaming, PS5 gameplay, and a full unboxing, so stay tuned. I've been using this monitor for a few days now and my first impressions was a nice large and curvy screen, which wraps nicely around your field of vision and immerses you in gaming. I also like the frameless design as well, it looks really nice. And the black levels are also great thanks to the VA panel. It's not as amazing as OLED, but VA panels come second when it comes to showing deep blacks. The exact screen panel size is 31 and a half inches, which with a 2560 by 1440 resolution, puts the pixel density to about 93 pixels per inch. I would have preferred a higher resolution like 4K given the size of this monitor, but if you're moving from a 27 inch 1080p monitor to this larger 1440p monitor, you'll have higher pixel density which should look better. Before we get into the fun stuff, let's unbox the Titan Army monitor here. Go ahead and lift this up here. All right, first thing we're gonna see here is the monitor stand feet. This is gonna be the base of it and it's gonna be in this really nice black color. Next, we have the other piece of the monitor stand here. Uh, I believe this is gonna be the arm portion that connects to the monitor itself. I'm really excited to see how this monitor looks. You can see this nice little curvature here. We got the bags of all the accessories here. Now, when you put it on the stand, it's really recommended to make sure you take off the bottom foam piece and you just slide it back in so you can have a more stable surface area here. You don't want uh, curvature to be face flat, but I do want to remove the uh, plastic on here first. So far, I'm noticing that the monitor is relatively light. I like a lot. You can see right over here is where we will attach the monitor stand here. All right, before we install the stand, what we get inside the box, we're gonna have a nice display port cable. We're also gonna get a standard US plug here, and it looks like there's no power brick. It's gonna be built inside the actual monitor. We're gonna have four screws to install the stand, and they also give us four standoffs here. It's most likely so you can put this on a monitor arm. All right, so in order to install the monitor stand here, we're gonna start with the base of the feet here, and we just take the other portion over here, and we just line it up. And there's gonna be a screw that goes right in the middle. You're gonna need a very thin screwdriver to make sure it fits. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and tight. Now we have the stand nice and prepped. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this latch out. And this portion over here is gonna be attached to this monitor stand right here. So you wanna basically kinda of put this right over here, right in the middle. Now you're gonna notice there's gonna be a screw right on top, right over here, and another screw right in the middle. So in the middle and on the top, so we just gotta put two screws to make sure that's nice and nice and secured. All right, wanna make sure that's nice and tight. And so you'll see right here, we have the screw all the way in. So these two screws ensure that this stand is nice and sturdy. Next thing we have to do here is attach the monitor stand. And the best way to do this is to kinda of like rotate this monitor upside down. So I'm just gonna grab the monitor here, flip it. And then I'm gonna attach the monitor stand kind of like upside down. That way we got a nice secured base and then we can just pick this all up and place it on the desk. So it definitely takes a couple of steps, but once you follow it through, it's actually pretty easy. And what helps a lot is this monitor is uh, nice and light as well. All right, let's take a look at the design of this monitor. So you'll notice that it's very, very basic. It's basically a matte black finish. So this is nice if you want something very subtle, um, no need for any craziness in the back here. I do like the fact that the stand is very, very slim, as you can see here. And the back oval shape also has RGB lighting as well. Now take a look at the inputs here. You do have a back piece cover that covers it up, but you can remove it for easier access. So right in the back, we're gonna have two HDMI ports, two display ports, and right in the center there, it looks like it's a three and a half millimeter jack. And then once you have it nice and secure, you can pretty much apply the back cover plate. 
so that way it's nice and hidden. All right, and taking a look at how it fits in your desk setup, for reference here, my desk is about 26 inches deep. And what I do like about the monitor stand is that it doesn't look like it takes so much space. Um, it has a very thin body frame. Now, as for cable management, it does a pretty decent job of cable managing. You can see that once you have all the cables, you can kind of route it down right in the middle. There's some spacing here. You can still see the cables on the bottom, but it's honestly not that bad. Now, in terms of ergonomic support on this monitor stand, you're pretty much very limited here. The only option you have is a tilt mechanism. So it could be tilted up or you could have it tilted all the way down. And that's pretty much it here. There's no, you know, swivel. There's no height adjustments. You're pretty much stuck at this height. So if you want more adjustability, then I highly recommend getting yourself a monitor arm. While it's not super sturdy, it still does the job done. Being that this is a 32 inch monitor, I still like the fact that this monitor stand is on the thinner side. Now let's test out the gaming performance of the Titan Army C32C1S using my gaming PC that I just built with a Rogue Strix 4070 Super and an AMD 7900X. Full build will be listed down below and stay tuned because I'll also showcase PS5 gameplay. Loading up Modern Warfare 3 on shipment is always a crazy battlefield, but the Titan Army was able to keep up with all the fast paced action. 240 hertz and a one millisecond response time really makes this monitor great and I was surprised in how well the adaptive setting kept everything running buttery smooth. The 1440p resolution also means you don't have to have a super high end graphics card to take advantage of this monitor's high refresh rate. I was able to keep the graphics settings to ultra and having DLSS set to balance on my 4070 Super. This monitor also has the ability to adjust the black levels on the shadow balance in the settings which is a great feature for first person shooters letting you see enemies in the most darkest scenes. Forza 5 also looked amazing and everything just ran smoothly. The 1500R curvature makes the gaming experience immersive and for the size of this monitor, I think having a curvature is better than flat in my opinion. This monitor doesn't have built in speakers which I'm always okay with because you can have way better sound quality with dedicated PC speakers. Taking a break from gaming, this display has HDR 400, but personally, I wouldn't recommend using HDR on Windows. The standard colors look so much better. Talking about colors, this monitor has a 99% sRGB color gamut coverage, 85% DCI P3 color gamut coverage, which for most will provide nice and rich color. The brightness levels of this monitor has a typical brightness of 350 nits, which is more than enough. One of the advantages of VA panels over IPS is the fact that the black levels look so much better on VA panels. So how does the PS5 perform on this Titan Army C32C1S? When you enable 1440p output, this monitor will be able to support 60Hz and 120Hz, but no variable refresh rate. You would also need to enable HDR on the monitor so that the colors look more accurate. Since this monitor has no built-in speakers, you'll have to use headsets or use a 3.5mm headphone jack and use an aux cable to connect to an aux input on an external speaker. Astro's World looks great on the PS5 and when turning to God of War, it performs smoothly thanks to high performance mode and the 120Hz support. I'm really happy that this monitor features HDMI 2.1, which is able to support next generation console. So if you have a Series X, you should expect similar performance. Using this monitor for everyday tasks has been a good experience thanks to the large 32 inch display. I feel like I have so much space and makes multitasking so much easier. Splitting windows evenly by three is awesome. As a content creator, I rely on DaVinci Resolve to create and edit my content. Having a big display comes in clutch when you're in your editing workflow and I feel like I can squeeze so much more information to help make it easier. I personally prefer ultra wides, but a 16 by nine aspect ratio at 32 inches makes it closer to that experience. So is the Titan Army C32C1S worth the price tag of $399? Well, considering you're getting a large screen with 240Hz and a one millisecond response time, it makes this an awesome budget performing gaming monitor. There's even a great chance you can get an even better deal on this monitor by using my link in the description box below. I use different resolutions when testing out monitors and sometimes it takes time to adjust for either higher or lower resolution. 4K on a 32 inch would make this monitor even better but that also means the price will skyrocket and would also mean a stronger gaming PC to be able to keep up. You're getting two display ports and two HDMI 2.1 ports, which is plenty for consoles and PC. While you may not have additional features like a USB hub, G-Sync, or HDR1000, 
I think this monitor brings a lot of value for those that just want the bare minimum, fast refresh rate, and a large curvy screen. For under $400, I have no issues recommending this monitor if you want a large, budget-friendly 240Hz gaming monitor. If you are interested in getting this monitor or the many tech that you've seen in this video, I will have affiliate links down below which also helps and supports the Firewolf Tech channel. Even though Titan Army sponsored this video, they have no control over my opinions of this monitor as I try to keep this review as unbiased and honest as possible. I also want to thank you for sticking to the end of this video and will also like to know your thoughts and feedbacks in the comments down below. I hope this video was helpful for you guys and I would love your support with a like, share, and subscribe. Firewolf out.